Hello, everybody, uh, and welcome. Uh, hello, Gerald. Nice to see you on board. We are expecting uh, a few more participants, so let's give it a minute or or so to uh, bring everybody on board. Yeah, and hi everyone from my side. So yeah, Stephen Dunk, it's great to see you. This is our first uh, webinar in, uh, <clears throat> for outdoor lighting control. Very excited to, to present this today. And thank you. We are, okay guys, uh, I think we are, well, uh, the numbers are counting still, so, but we start. Anyway, uh, uh, everybody, uh, welcome uh, to this webinar from us at Lumen Radio. My name is uh, Jens Markibier, and together here with me and today's speaker is uh, Mr. Stephen Dunk. Should be like so, depending on... <laughs> anyway, um, the purpose uh, of this webinar is to increase your knowledge in wireless technologies and where and when to use it. The goal is that you shall feel confident enough to quote a wireless lighting control system with the help from us or any other supplier. To also get a deeper understanding of uh, wireless lighting control, uh, keep your eyes open for our next webinar. Sign up for our newsletter on our website, lumeradio.com, and uh, follow us on uh, LinkedIn for the latest updates. You will, of course, also get some information about our own uh, solution, the AirGlow, at the end of this uh, webinar. Uh, during the presentation, we will do some polls for you to answer. Uh, you will see them in the upper right corner of the sidebar. Click on the polls button. This uh, will, of course, keep us on our toes, learn more uh, of your daily projects, and hopefully keep you awake. Regarding questions, which we hope and fear will appear, um, Feel free, feel free to ask them uh, anytime during the presentation. Please use the question tab that is also found uh, in the right sidebar. If you would like to send a private message, click on the name icon. The questions uh, will be answered at the end of the webinar. And if you wish to have a private conversation with any of us, uh, please use the button saying private uh, in the upper right corner uh, under chat. Uh, after the webinar, uh, there will be a checklist sent to you afterwards uh, as a, yeah, a checklist for your, uh, uh, if you should go for a wireless system or not. There will all, this webinar will also be recorded and available at, uh, well, it will be sent out to you guys, but also available on the magnificent site of Lumen Radio, of course. With that said, I'm happy to leave you in the good hands of uh, Mr. Stephen Duck. Steve. Okay, I'm just, just give me a second. Okay, so you should be able to hear me now. So yes, thank you, gents. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, in case uh, any of you just arrived, so I'll just uh, repeat a couple of points. So yeah, please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, this is going to be an interactive presentation. We want to hear from you as much as you want to hear from us. We want to learn together. This is a learning experience. So maybe just a technical point, uh, you might have been using a different browsers. So try to use Chrome or Safari. That's probably the easiest. And um, yeah, Jens and I, we're going to launch some polls, some questions to find out uh, what you know already about outdoor lighting control. As Jen mentioned, uh, maybe you've just arrived. So this presentation will be in two sections. Firstly, I'm going to talk about outdoor lighting control in general. And then at the end of that, after the conclusions, I will present the Lumen Radio solution. And don't forget that there'll be a checklist at the end, which we will share with you so that you can understand and know when to use wireless outdoor lighting control. So let me share my screen. And let's start the presentation. Okay, just to let you know, I can't see what's happening with the chat and the questions and the polls 
during the presentation. I can only see my presentation. Okay, so please, please forgive me if I don't answer your questions immediately. Uh, I can't actually see what's going on. So Jens will be handling uh, the webinar interaction side during the presentation. Okay, so let me start. So what is outdoor wireless lighting control? And of course, why do I need it? So in this brief presentation, we'll, I will give you an introduction about outdoor lighting control. Just a minute, Stephen. Yeah. We're on the... Here we go. Sorry, that was my, my bad. Jens, you're fired. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> okay, so uh, I will be comparing different smart lighting control solutions. And then, of course, conclusions. And then we will talk about the Lumen Radio offer. So we want to make this today as simple as possible. We want to help you to understand what is wireless lighting control for outdoor applications and give you the confidence to talk to your customers about it. So our very first question, of course, is your own personal experience. Jens, please launch the first poll about personal experience. How much experience have you had with wireless lighting controls, indoors or outdoors? Please place your votes. This may, may seem a little bit like the Eurovision Song Contest uh, with so many people from so many different countries. It's fantastic to see people from Portugal, from France, from England, from Thailand. It's great to have you here. Okay, Jens, any results from the first poll? Yeah, we see some results and there's a, a wide range of answers, which mm -hmm. is good. Some have a lot of knowledge, some have none. So hopefully we can help you all a little bit today. Great. Okay. Thank you, Jens. So introduction, where is smart lighting found? Well, we hear a lot about smart cities, don't we? It's the buzzword that's been going around for, for many years. And of course, IoT, the Internet of Things. What is that? What is the Internet of Things? Well, it's your smartwatch. It's your Alexa. But it's also industrial sensors, pollution sensors, traffic radar, this is all IoT equipment. And then, of course, we hear a lot about green initiatives. We want to make a difference to this planet today, not tomorrow, today. So where does smart lighting come into that? Well, the simple answer is all of it. Smart lighting can be part of a smart city on a city-wide scale. And IoT, we talk about interactivity, sharing and communicating, whether it's a lighting or data about pollution or traffic monitoring. And of course, green initiatives, dark skies. We want to use the light only when we need it for comfort and safety. So smart lighting is found in so many different domains today. But what about the size of the projects? Now you guys, you may be having citywide projects or you might have small to medium scale projects. Maybe you have just a hotel or a city center, a city square. Well, they also need smart lighting because these systems, they will talk to the building information management. They will be part of a dashboard to make the lighting optimum for your project. So let me come to the next poll. How much experience have you had with outdoor lighting control? Jens, please launch poll number two, project experience. Will do. If you have inquiries about wireless smart lighting projects, what number of luminaires are usually involved? Less than 20, more than 20, and so on. Super interesting to see uh, the big picture out there. Mm, yes, we want to know, are you guys involved in large projects, more than 100, or are you more involved in smaller projects? And also finding the right products for the right project. Mm. How do we see the, the, the votes are coming in? And uh, it's, uh, it's the same as with the knowledge. Uh, there's a, a big variety. And, and uh, yeah, we need to say that also that it's, uh, you can only vote for one, uh, one of the, the four in this case. 
That's correct, yes. Unfortunately, it's not a multiple choice uh, poll. You can only select one. Well, I think we got it all, more or less. Thank you very much. We'll keep on rocking, Stephen. Okay, thank you. So let's go into the details. What is wireless lighting control? Well, it is what it sounds. It's control with a wireless technology using radio waves to transmit data to control lighting levels. But that doesn't mean it needs to be connected to the cloud. When we think of indoor or outdoor lighting, it can be a simple autonomous system. So we call that a standalone network. That's what's here on the left hand side. Where the lights talk to each other on a pre-programmed level through a wireless communication. And then the second option is an online network where that information is then shared through something called a gateway or a hub to a wider system. And that can be shared in many different ways. It can go what's called through a mesh network and onto a hub. And then that can be transmitted through a GSM signal. Or we have what's called a star network, which you can see in the middle on the right hand side. A star network is where it's one to one communication. There's no mesh network. The hub talks to each individual light point one by one. And that's actually similar how Wi Fi works. And then the final general solution is that each individual light point talks to a GSM antenna. So each one, that's what's called NB-IoT, narrow band IoT. So each and every light point has a SIM card inside it and is completely independent. OK, so what's the difference between using a standalone smart system and an online network? Well, let me go through the pros and cons of each type of system. So on a standalone system where the, the luminaires are talking to each other, you have instant commissioning. You have excellent features versus cost. You have all of this smart abilities with programming, with motion sensors, with manual control, but you don't have the high cost of a gateway, for example. So there's no bottleneck. It means that if one luminaire is, is not functioning, if, if there's some maintenance nearby, the network keeps working. There's no one individual leader. So they all work together. But the disadvantages of a standalone network, as opposed to a connected online network, is of course, there's no monitoring feature. And also there's no on-site monitoring. Well, it's on-site monitoring only which actually can be a benefit. If you are nearby, if you're constantly on site, then of course, that's a possibility. So let's look at the online network. What are the advantages of an online network connected via a gateway or a hub, as opposed to a standalone network? Well, of course, the big feature is the monitoring. If you want to constantly have that information, if you want to check your luminaires every day, then you have this monitoring feature. However, there are several drawbacks with using an online network. You have the main, what's called bottleneck, a gateway, a point that takes in all the information from all the luminaires in your network and then shares it to the cloud. Well, if that gateway stops working, then that's it. The system will stop. If you're using NB IoT system, where each individual light point has a SIM card, then that can be very high cost. You have many, many SIM cards, many, many licenses. So of course, that's a high cost that needs to be included on a yearly basis. And of course, if there's a monitoring feature, you need someone to monitor it. You need to be paying somebody to check that information. And then of course, if you've got 4G or other GPRS connection, you'll be paying for that too. Well, outdoor wireless lighting control, we see a lot of it on street and area lighting. Probably 90% of outdoor wireless lighting control is on street and area lighting. 
You hear are some examples which I found from the internet. There are many, many versions available. And we, we talk about, well, how is it assembled? How is it connected, this, this clever wireless lighting control? Well, it's connected via socket. But before I go into that, I want to launch the next poll. Because yes, we have street and area lighting, but maybe you guys, maybe you're interested in other products as well because there are so many outdoor products out there. We have bollards, we have in-grounds, we have wall-mounted, catenary. Do you want a wireless lighting control? Do you need it in your projects? So, Jens, please launch poll number three, luminaire types. Well, first first uh, one in or a second and all of the above. Mm -hmm. Aperture here, uh, of course. In what sort of products would you expect to find outdoor wireless lighting control? Mm. Yeah, and I think um, that is uh, there's endless of opportunities here, of course. Mm. But to, as we all see on the picture uh, in Stephen's presentation, generally, generally it's in the street and area lighting. Yeah, but there are other opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. uh, perfect. Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah, keep on voting. Um, okay, so it's a high percentage of street and area lighting. Yeah, yeah, and that's okay. what's expected, I guess. Yes, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. But I guess some um, the all of the above uh, voters are uh, the ones that we fancy the most. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Jens, and thank you for voting. Okay, so I talked a little bit about the connector. How does this super wireless controller, how does it connect to this luminaire? Well, there are two main ways that it connects. In fact, there are three. The first one is by drilling a hole and having an antenna coming out the uh, the luminaire. But you have problems with IP rating, so I won't really talk about that. The other one, of course, is a separate module, which can be connected to the outside of the pole. But again, that's ugly and there's a risk uh, of damage to the uh, to the unit. So the main way that people connect their their controller, their wireless lighting controller to a luminaire is via a socket. So there are two main types of socket on the market today. The first one here on the left, it's called the Zaga Book 18. Now, for those who don't know, the Zaga is a consortium of manufacturers that of lighting manufacturers that help create standards. Standards for many different types of connectors for indoors and outdoor lighting. And they create books, book one, book two, book three. So book 19, for example, is for indoor connectors. And this one, the Zaga book 18, is specifically for outdoor lighting. So you have a nice seal, it has good connection. And it's designed for LED technology. The NEMA 7, was originally developed in the US many years ago, and now it's available all over the world. So let me, let me go into a little bit more detail. So the NEMA 7, which is pictured here, it's an American standard and it's used, it's, it's a legacy product. It's used all over the world. We'll find it in many different countries, in the, in the US, in Europe, in, in Asia market. It's very, very popular. It was originally developed for power metering and daylight sensors. And now with the advancement of technology, now moving to LED technology, further applications have been used for this. Now, if nothing is connected on it, it needs what's called a shorting bar to make sure the electricity runs into the luminaire. And of course, because this is connected to the 230 volt AC supply line, you have to make sure that you have good surge protection on your wireless lighting controller because that could take the punch of a, of a lightning strike or a uh, welding equipment nearby. The Zagabook 18 socket is relatively new. It's only been around for about five or six years. It's small, it's lightweight, and it's easy to integrate into these fixtures. Now, luminaire fixtures are getting smaller and smaller. Before we had the big HID, the big xenon bulbs, that needed a lot of space. But now, now OEMs are designing around the LED board, around the drivers. 
So there's not much space. And this Zygabook connector is specifically designed for the LED market. It connects from, the, from a 24 volt DC power supply and the DALI line from the LED driver. And then that socket then connects to your wireless lighting controller. And this is part of what we call the D4i certification. Don't worry if you haven't heard of D4i. Okay, it's the next generation of DALI. You have DALI, DALI 2, DALI D4i. And in another presentation, I will talk about DALI Plus. So what I want to know from you guys is what sort of sockets you've, you've encountered. What do you know? Do you use mostly the Zagabook 18? Or are you also using the NEMA 7? So, Jens, please launch the next poll. It's out there uh, for outdoor applications. It's normal to use a quick fit socket to speed up commissioning. Would you prefer to use a NEMA 7 socket or a Zagabook 18? Yep. Okie dokie. Carry on. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, yep, the poll's in. The poll's in. And? Uh, well, it's, uh, I would say it's a Saga Book 18 that's uh, ahead. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. For us, in a way. Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> that's good. That's really good to know. That's th thank, thank you. you. Okay, so you want to know more about outdoor wireless lighting, but what about the end user experience? You may have seen this UX, user experience. Because that's what people want to know. They, they, they want to control the lights. They want to monitor the lights. So here are some screenshots of typical PC-based apps. Now, these apps are generally for controlling large numbers of luminaires. We're talking citywide luminaires. We're talking hundreds, if not thousands, of light points. So these programs are specifically designed to be able to monitor large quantities of luminaires. You'll have a, an interactive map, you'll have charts, and you'll be able to download them and use them on a dashboard, for example. Now, there are many different vendors out there on the market. You've probably heard of some of them. You may have heard of Schrader, Philips, uh, Telenza. So it'd be great to know, who have you heard of? Who do you know about? So, Jens, let's ask the next poll. Which, which vendors one, do you know? <laughs> which wireless lighting vendor have you most encountered in the past? Well, uh, I guess we're going to see 100% mm -hmm. on, on one of them. No. What? Carry on. Well, well, come on, come on. Vote, vote. Mm -hmm. it's, ooh. Interesting. Oh, yeah. I like what I see. Okay. Lumen Radio. Uh, well, more encounters with Lumen Radio. That's uh, good to see. But, of course, we see some uh, big guys out there. Philip Signify. Yes. Kasambi are the majority of what you have encountered. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for the, the, the answers, guys. Yeah. I mean, the results look similar to what we expect. You know, the big guys, they're out there on their citywide projects. We've got the Philips, the Schraders. They're very well known in the market with their city touch uh, equipment. They are the number one for citywide projects. So, of course, I'm not surprised uh, with that, with those answers. Thank you. But on these smaller projects, the private projects, the industrial park, the private residency, do we need something so complicated? Well, if you're looking for that middle, that middle road, you have apps which run on the smartphone. Simple standalone apps which you download onto your telephone or tablet, and it allows you to control your small park of luminaires. So here's some examples of smartphone apps. You see they don't have a map, but they have all the functionality you need for small projects. So let's, let's change the subject a little bit, okay? 
I've been talking about the connections. I've been talking about the apps. But what about cables? Should I be using cables to control my luminaires? Should I use a wireless solution? Of course, the customers are going to be asking you that. They'll be saying, what is the best of using a wireless lighting control system? I'm really worried. I won't have any control. I, I don't know what's happening. Well, let's go, let's compare if we use a cable lighting control system and a wireless lighting control system. So of course, cables, it's a physical connection. You can see it, you can feel it. If it's disconnected, it's visible. You can see it's not connected. It's easy to understand. Electricians, they can use their equipment, they can use their voltmeters, and they can say, yes, these cables are not connected. However, there are many drawbacks with using cables for signal control. Because what happens when you have a damaged cables? These cables might be used in the streets or in parks, which can be dug up or attacked by animals. They can get wet, they can corrode, and troubleshooting can be a lot of work. Imagine digging a whole trench, four or five meters to find out which section, where is that cable damaged? And will you be using PVC or silicon cables for indoor or outdoor applications? And you might need special cables with what's called shielding because these signals are very quiet, very sensitive to noise. Not audio noise, but EMC, electromagnetic disturbances. And you can have a long commissioning time. It takes a long time to unravel, lay down, refill. And if you are working on, on an old building, a class two, a class one building, there are restrictions on what you can do. Yes, they want their smart lighting. Yes, they want RGBW. But you're not allowed to put down new cables. Or you have to replace all of the cabling in the building. And that could be very, very expensive. And finally, something called voltage drop. The longer the cable, the less voltage there is at the end. And signals are generally low voltage. We're talking about five volt signals. And over 300 meters, the signal just doesn't arrive. So why use wireless solutions? Because of all of that, it's cable free. You don't have that hassle of pulling up cables. Oh, have I connected the positive to the negative? Which one is which? Do I need, I need to print out a label. I have to print out a label and put it around the cable. No, you don't have to do that. It's accessible in any areas. You're not going to be reaching around the corner of a building. And what's called firmware over the air updates, which means you get instant updates to your equipment. You don't have to uninstall it. You don't have to open up the luminaire and, and get into the driver, you can actually have the update done through the controller, which means it does quick commissioning. It's all done through a very simple PC or telephone app. Of course, there are some drawbacks to wireless solutions. Nothing's perfect. There are EMC interference from other equipment. If you don't have reliable hardware, and a strong software, your equipment will be sensitive to other equipment, whether it's a Bluetooth headphones or other Wi-Fi system. You need to have a reliable wireless solution. We have what's called man in the middle attacks, where someone comes along and hacks your system. That can happen. People have been losing bitcoins. People have been losing emails, this happens. So you need a secure encryption. And of course, range. People always say, yes, but in real life, I have mountains 
There are trees, there are buildings. Well, cables have to go that far as well. But yes, on outdoor applications, range is important too. So you've probably seen all of these. These are what's called protocols. These are languages, which the units, these what we call nodes, they talk to each other on. But which one should I use? Good question. So let me briefly explain what they are. LoRaWAN, long range wireless, um, wireless network. That's very popular in some cities. They've even set up, municipalities have actually set up networks with the LoRaWAN so you can hook onto that network. It's a few cities in the world, not so many. The range is pretty good on LoRaWAN point to point. We have what's called NB-IoT. I mentioned that earlier. Narrowband IoT. LTE. These are what's called sub one gigahertz frequencies. These have the advantage of having a long range. The lower the frequency, the longer the range. The higher the frequency, the more data you can transmit, but the range gets reduced. You have other protocols, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Bluetooth, Z-Wave or Sigfox, and finally Thread. Some of these are very well known, not only in the lighting world, of course. We all have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on our telephones. So my next question is related to lighting, okay? So what wireless protocols do you know in the lighting applications? Jens, please launch the next poll. Yes, sir, uh, just launched it. Which wireless protocol have you heard about the most for lighting control? Zigbee, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mm. Thread, LoRaWAN, and BIoT. Looking forward to your answers, guys. Yeah. And if you have any questions about these protocols, please feel free to send us a message now in the questions tab. We will answer them at the end of the presentation. Well, thank you. Oh, yeah, there are still some votes coming mm -hmm. in. We'll, uh, we'll wait for you guys. And we also have some uh, of you answering in the chat, which is great. Thank you very much. I hope you're doing well, Steve, and that you are have a stable line right now. Mm. Thank okay. you. Thank you, guys. As okay. a ju Just a quick reminder, uh, at the end of the uh, uh, webinar, this will actually be, uh, you'll actually be able to rewatch this. Um, this is actually being recorded and will be available to be shared with your colleagues uh, or watch later. Maybe maybe you didn't understand something and you can come back and you can rewatch it later. Of course, on a Saturday night with a glass of wine or likewise. Obviously, <laughs> yes, or a nice cold beer. <laughs> so your customers and yourself want to know what are the benefits of using outdoor wireless lighting control? Firstly, of course, no cables. Look at this, this is a fire hazard. You see all these cables, this is so difficult to decide which one is yours, which one is mine. Are they properly wired? Are they damaged? No hassles, pulling in, pulling out these cables. It just makes life much, much easier using a wireless system. And of course, they're secure. We talk about 128-bit security. These are similar systems used by banks in their transaction verification. So this ensures that other people cannot come in and steal your credentials. They are easy to install and commission. A simple twist and lock, no tools, no screws, no pliers to cut the, you know, you need to de-sheath the cables. No, you don't have any of that because the Luminaire has the socket pre-installed by the OEM manufacturer. So during the commissioning stage, it takes two minutes. You twist, you lock, you switch it on, and you commission. 
long range, either through a star network or via a mesh technology by using what we call hops. You can transmit the data to the next, to the next, to the next. You get that long range over um, several kilometers. And the buzzword future proof. What does future proof mean? It means that you can adapt the system later on. You can add features, you can add luminaires, or you can remove features. You can remove luminaires with a click of a button. You don't need to be pulling up cables. It just takes seconds to remove, not hours. So now you're asking yourself, well, how do I evaluate? What should I think about? What should I consider when looking at an outdoor lighting project? Do I need dimming? Do I need cables? And if I do need dimming, what sort of dimming should I use? Should I be using 1 to 10 volt? Should I be using DALI? Well, I will go into details about the difference between these different types of controls in another webinar. Today's webinar is just a brief introduction. But now I'm going to go through some questions you should ask yourself when designing your outdoor lighting project. So what's important is the application. Am I near a pedestrian zone? Do I need zones? Is it one long straight road? What is the range? How many luminaires am I using? And of course, how many sensors do you need? Do you need 100 luminaires and 100 sensors? What do you need? How big is the project? Is it a car park or is it a motorway? What sort of control is your customer expecting? Will they just be switching off the luminaires during the daytime? Or will they want some sort of dynamic feature, maybe with a daylight sensor? Would they be happy with a standalone system, an autonomous system that can think by itself? What sort of reliability or lag is acceptable? You may have heard of the popcorn effect. Do you mind if the luminaires don't switch on at the same time? Maybe if you have separate zones which are not visible from each other. Maybe you could get away with that. Or maybe you want all the luminaires to switch on at the same time. Are there other wireless systems nearby today or in the future? Maybe you have different stages in your project. Maybe you have residency one built today, and in two years time, there's going to be another residency nearby. So will there be other signals nearby? Is it in an airport or in a hospital? You need to think about that to choose a system which is reliable. Of course, what physical interferences might you be facing? This could be buildings. Again, today or tomorrow. Today, you have a clear line of sight. But maybe in two years' time, maybe there's a building in the way. Are there trees? Of course, if it's a park, it's quite obvious. Electrical storms. Now, I used to live in Thailand. Hi, guys. Hi, Unilamp. Um, it was constantly having electrical storms. And this can affect, can greatly affect lighting systems, cabled or wireless. There are heavy rainstorms. Dust, leaves and snow can affect the quality of wireless signals. So in conclusion, what is a wireless outdoor control system? 
It's a means of communicating between light points. We have what's called a mesh, which provides a self-healing network. You can have the option of a gateway to share and monitor light points. No signal cables. Of course, your luminaires need power, but they don't need these expensive EMC shielded cables. What is outdoor wireless lighting control? It's easy commissioning. It has the range and scalability, so you can add or remove very easily. And of course, you have this cost saving, reduced lead time, uh, no cables, compared to wire solution, a wired solution with DALI functionality. Of course, if you compared an on-off solution to a wireless solution, you won't have the same prices, but you don't have the same functionality. So that's the end of my first part of my presentation. A general overlook into what is outdoor lighting control. So now I'm going to talk about the Lumen Radio offer. What we can provide to you and your customers. So we have what's called the Airglow. It's the perfect solution for small and medium sized projects. Our catchphrase is wireless without worries. And it's absolutely true. Life is easy with the Airglow. Easy installing, easy commissioning. Intuitive control app available on any mobile device. Whether it's an Android or an Apple, we have the free to download app. Go and check it out today. The Airglow, search for it and have a play with it. It's a smart standalone network. So it makes your network intelligent without that high cost of a license or subscription. It has the long range. Lumen Radio is famous for its radio protocol. That's our core business. That is our expertise. <clears throat> so we know what we're talking about. We have that long range needed for outdoor projects. We have reliability, self-healing network. And it's not just a, a catchword, it's true. We have what's called cognitive coexistence. We are actually able to have a Bluetooth communication and our own protocol called Myra, Myra Mesh on the same board. We can talk to your smartphone and we can talk to our nodes, which are a kilometer away. Our products are smart city ready. They are prepared for future development and something very unique. And I challenge you to find it on any other wireless lighting controller. We are the only company on the market that does DALI DT6 six channel for RGBW and Amber. Why should I use that? Why would I need that? Well, many cities around Europe are now looking for tunable white solutions. They are looking to have the right color temperature for comfort and safety. And of course, RGBW with Amber is a fantastic solution for architectural and pedestrian areas. So let's talk a little bit about our solution, the Lumen Radio Myra OS. It has this node and concurrent Bluetooth, like I showed here. Doesn't this look a little bit like a human brain, the way the nodes are firing off and talking to each other? It's very self-healing. And there's the option in the future to connect to a gateway. Now, we talked about the internet of things, but what about the interference of things? This isn't the mountain range in the Himalayas, but this is actually different signals 
trying to share the same frequency. In red, we have the uh, Zigbee, sorry, I just jumped through that too quickly. Um, and in blue, green and yellow, we have Wi-Fi. And the, those can interfere. And what happens is the Wi-Fi is a stronger signal. So the Zigbee signal gets drowned out. So you need to use the right equipment when you have a noisy environment. So here is an example of our technology. It's called cognitive coexistence. We scan the whole 2.4 gigahertz band that we allow to use. And there are channels on that frequency. And we scan it constantly through our experience of DMX dynamic lighting. We know that we have to use the quietest channels and we constantly scan to make sure that we're using the best channel. This gives us two major advantages. One is the range. We can go further. And number two, reliability. Can I add one thing? You can. Thank you very much. And also not interfering or get interfered by other networks. Mm, yeah. So not interfering or being interfered. That is a huge topic as well, I would say. Mm, thank you, Jens. Okay, so we've come to the end of this presentation. Soon we will go to the questions and answers. And if there aren't any questions, we also have frequently asked questions. People often come to me and ask me about outdoor lighting control. So we'll go through those as well. But before we do that, Jens will share the checklist with you. This will help you and your customers evaluate what you need for outdoor lighting. Do I need dimming? Should I share it now? Yes, please, Jens. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, please share it. I share it. Now I share it. So do I need cables or wireless? The third question, should I be using a 1 to 10 volt or DALI dimming? And finally, which wireless system should I be using? So please fill this in and send this to us. And we will help you. Okay. If you're, you're, the very first question is, do I need dimming? And those there are six questions, sorry, five questions in there, which help you evaluate yes or no. Of course, if any of the questions are yes, you should use dimming. Would the end user benefit from dimming? Is the return of investment reasonable? The second question, should I be using cables or wireless dimming? Again, the questions, if you answer any of the questions as yes, you should use wireless dimming. For example, is this a retrofit project? Because the cables are already there. You don't need to pull them up and put in new five core, six core cables. You've already got the cables there. Is the distance between the control center and the last luminaire more than 300 meters? This is very important because of the voltage drop, like I mentioned earlier. Are there more than 64 light points? This is to do with DALI. The fact that by using a wireless system, you can have much more than just 64 luminaires in your network. Third question, do I need one to 10 volt or DALI dimming? If you have zones, if you have groups, and if you have sensors, you must use DALI. Okay, DALI is good for overall dimming. If you want to dim a lot of units at the same time. But if you've got zones, then you're going to need a separate dimming system for every one to 10 volt luminaire. So it just makes sense to use DALI. And let's be honest, nowadays, the cost of a one to 10 volt driver is the same as a DALI driver. Whereas the DALI digital addressable lighting interface is digital, it's numerical, which means you can address it, you can talk to it individually, which means you get that unit or group control. 
So again, if you answer any of those questions, yes, in part three, you should be using DALI dimming. And finally, which wireless system to use? There are lots of questions here. Like, are the Luminaires D4i compatible? I talked a little bit about that earlier. Please fill this in and send this to myself or Jens, and we will help you to answer those questions. So now I've come to the end of the presentation. So now, of course, I want to know, are you satisfied with this information or do you need more? As Jens mentioned, there will be future webinars and we will be going into more details about commissioning, about exactly how the Airglow functions. So today, as a general introduction, please let me know if you're satisfied. So Jens, please launch the last poll. Yes, the poll is launched and uh, the question is, do you feel that you have learned enough today about wireless lighting control to feel confident in specifying or talking with clients about this technology? Uh, well, we have a lot of yeses, we have a need more information and we were actually hoping for it so we can have more of those fantastic please. webinars. Yeah, please, those who have written need more information. Please contact me and Jens now. Send us a question. I would love to hear what you need to know. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and um, we're going to start answering your questions. Okay, Jens, if you could put up the... Uh... Mm -hmm. No, wrong way. Mm -hmm. I just need to answer some questions at the same time. It's uh, yeah. I have to do multiple things. Yes. Okay, very confident and can attend. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, what what did you want us to? Uh... Yeah, the layout. If you can put uh, into the layout, and make sure that we are side by side. Yeah, we need to. Ding. No, wrong way. Oh, close. Uh, ah, that's should okay. Be next. Somewhere. Yep. Well, 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 you're in the, you're in the main guy. Okay. I'm, I'm the main guy. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, any questions? We have a question from, uh, Mr. Kuling. Um, uh, why do you, why do your Aglo not automatically address the DALI addresses? Well, uh, this is a functionality that will be available soon. Mm. What we call DALI commissioning. Then you will be able to scan the bus, um, uh, to, to, uh, confirm each, uh, color, for example. But if today you just use a one channel uh, luminaire with just one white, for example, there is no need for dollar commissioning at this point. We, mm -hmm. we then use uh, dollar broadcast, of course. Mm. I have to interrupt. Uh, I have the classic, my battery is nearly dying. So I'm going to go and get my power cable, uh, which will be a couple of minutes. So Jens will keep ans ask, ans answering your questions. Um, if there are any, yeah, otherwise, yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, okay, I'll be See back around. in two minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'll take over. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, uh, anyway, I think uh, since there are not too many questions coming in, but thank you, Steve, We're very confident and can attest the Luma radio is perfect, small. Thank you, Steve. Uh, well, uh, typical questions coming in, I mean, primarily that would be. Um, range topics, uh, network disturbances, uh, and how we, how, how, how do we cope with that? Well, uh, as uh, Stephen were uh, telling you a bit about before, we, we scan the 2.4 frequency 1,500 times per second to, to find the right, uh, this is the cognitive coexistence. So we predict uh, with this algorithm, okay, where we're gonna send and receive the signal. And also, we only use one one chip for our globe. We we have uh, the same chip for for Bluetooth and our Mira Mesh, using it concurrently. Uh, we time slot it so that sometimes we listen for Bluetooth, sometimes we listen and transmit for for Mira Mesh. We do this in a, uh, ten millisecond slots, uh, which makes it so if you may have to make a firmware over the air update in a in a network that you have a bunch.
please click. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Yes. So we'll let's share. Sorry. Let's yeah. share. Okay. So um, all right, great. Merci, Jean uh, Francois. Um, oui, vous avez des well, uh, I think. Uh, well, regarding the interference and stuff, we we scan the frequency one approximately one thousand five hundred times a second. Oh. Time slotting every ten milliseconds to listen for Bluetooth, mirror mesh, transmitting, receiving. Uh, so you will have no downtime if you if you do a firmware over the air update, for example. Oh. Yeah. That's one of the unique oh, that, that's the unique thing with with the cognitive processes. Mm -hmm. Range, for example, we uh, we have a one hundred percent success rate within uh, with uh, one thousand five hundred meters. Uh, and why would we need that? Well, uh, when it comes to interference from other networks, snow, rain, as uh, Stephen said, you you uh, install your product in the fall and there's no leaves on the trees, and in the spring, boom, flourishing. Then you have network down because of it's a lot of water in in leaves, and that's water is no good for radio. But then you you need to calculate with one tenth of your maximum range due to all those interferences. So we can guarantee 150 meters between two nodes in under worst circumstances. What, what more uh, questions do we get, Stephen? Uh, typically, is how many luminaires per oh, yeah, network? Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, uh, in one network, or as we call it, a system, there is up to 200 uh, airglows in one uh, network slash system. Uh, so if you have a street with 400, well, you need to have two uh, networks or two systems, which is perfectly fine. Um, what else do we get? I, I should have a bunch of questions uh, on the top of my head. Yeah, security uh, as well. Yep. <clears throat> Typical questions range uh, number of luminaires, uh, security, um, reliability. Those are the typical questions we get. Um, Ante, sorry. Yeah, or yeah, 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 I'm finished. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ante uh, has a question Is there a way for end users to interact with the installation? For example, oh. just the brightness of the luminaires with uh, in set limits with mobile phone. Uh, I would like to say yes to this today, but then I would be fired once again. <laughs> uh, no, you cannot manually control it at the moment. This is under development. Uh, so, well, uh, it will be there in a not too far future. Mm. Our product manager is not looking at this, but I know he's going to see it afterwards. So, so he will, yeah. So let me get back to you on that, Antti. Yeah. Here's, here's an example of our airglow uh, on a, on a luminaire. Uh, I haven't plugged it in today, but uh, this is what it looks like. Um, and uh, yes, it plugs into the Zagabook 18 socket. Yeah, and. Uh... Uh, Mr. Heise has a question regarding, imagine a smart city lighting project with 100, uh, more than 100 poles and lighting fixtures. Every lighting fixture shall also have a PIR sensor with proximity control. Yes, that works. Uh, right. You don't need 100 luminaires and 100 PIR sensors. That's the advantage of using a wireless network, is that you could have, you set up a scene, so the scene will activate uh, a number or a group of luminaires. So you have one motion sensor can activate all of them, 10, 50, 100 luminaires. Um, you know, because otherwise, if you've got 100 luminaires and 100 PIR sensor, why do you need a network? Yeah, so that's the major advantage is you're saving all that cost of all those PIR sensors. And by using a wireless network, you don't need to cable that information from that sensor to the last luminaire. It's all transmitted through the air. Yeah, see some people are uh, need to leave. I guess we're, uh, yeah, we're up to one hour. Um, so so there's gonna be a summary of, uh, of this uh, uh, available. Uh, we're gonna send the, the checklist to you guys. We're gonna, uh, well, I guess we're gonna send the, the recording as well. Yes. And any questions coming up, 
that we haven't answered. Uh, we were happy. And please get back to us with, with questions. And if you have projects that we can help you guys with. Yeah. And if you want a copy of the presentation uh, that I made, please contact me or Jens and, uh, and we'll send it to you. Okay. So please don't hesitate to contact me, Stephen Dunk, Stephen.dunk at luminradio.com. Uh, or Jens Markerberg. So thank you. Say again. Jens dot something, something, something. <laughs> well, great, guys. Uh, yeah. Have a good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining. And please join us for the next webinar. Thank you. See ya.